happen to um, make a small reveal about marriage according to the Spiritist view, and then about divorce according to the Spiritist view, and hopefully we will get some solutions that can inspire us to um, to work on this very uh, important project for ours, for us. So marriage, what is, uh, so because this topic, it's, it's so, uh, even if you only use the gospel according to spiritism in the spirits book, there are so many arguments that Alain Kardec presents that we are not going to be interactive during this session, because I have uh, 30 minutes to talk about it. Um, so if anybody has any question about anything, uh, if you can make a note or a mental note, after the pass and prayer, I'm going to be available to answer questions or if anybody wants to comment about this topic. So we have a little bit more time after and more freedom for discussions. So when I ask you questions now during the lecture, um, just practicing answering in your head, because then you'll be a more active listener rather than passive. Otherwise, then you're gonna maybe get tired and sleep at the end of the day. Um, so what is marriage in Earth's perspective? So just some time for you to answer to yourself. Usually uh, for us in the Western world, Brazilians and Americans, um, it is related when two people meet and they have, uh, maybe they like each other, they really like each other, they see a future together and they agree upon um, embarking this journey together, making life changes, very important life changes. And sometimes there is a ceremony, uh, everybody's dressing nice, everybody's trying to give their best, hopefully. Uh, there is a legal contract, a legal binding. Um, there is uh, sometimes a religious ceremony, sometimes a uh, social. Ricardo, você está mudo. Yeah, somebody, uh, is that the host that muted me? Can you guys hear me now? Okay. Sim. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I know this. That's why I stopped talking. Yeah, desculpa, eu fui, eu fui adicionar alguém <laughs> bati sem querer, desculpa. <laughs> no problem. Um, so, and then in our world, um, sometimes we need to get married in the religious, sometimes in the civil, and sometimes both, sometimes only one is necessary. And so it, it's hard to define something that's unique to each couple in our planet. Uh, but this is the overall the material view of marriage, um, at least for us, incarnated on earth. So when I was researching for the spiritual view, um, we're going to add some humor uh, because this is a, such a sensitive topic. Uh, the humor helps us to, to have a different perspective, a positive perspective. And I was looking for an uh, image that would represent very well the spiritist perspective on marriage. And I found this joke, I don't endorse, the spiritism does not endorse. Uh, but some parts of that, uh, it is very similar to the spiritist definition. So it's an internet meme about marriage. So this end says that marriage should be like a workshop where the husband works and the wife shops. The truth is that um, in the spiritist perspective, we could just change one word. The husband works and the wife works. Two. So in the material perspective, just to say to, uh, a fact that I, I've heard a couple of years ago in Brazil, uh, the majority of the percentage of the household, the providers were women. So if anybody believes the sentence is true, be aware that you might be wrong. Uh, that's just uh, an example. To, uh, now, to the spiritist view, uh, Joana de Angelis presents a perspective that is it is very similar to the idea of the workshop. Now in spiritism, work is any useful occupation. So then marriage, both husband and wife should work in a very useful occupation, which we're gonna see next. 
That's from the book After the Storm. She says, as a general rule, so this is not absolute. Actually, tonight, I don't think we're giving any absolute definition. So those are just general and apply to us in Earth, a world of trials and expiations. So as a general rule, marriage is a laboratory for emotional readjustments. If uh, those who, who were um, who participate in our previous lectures where we talked that uh, Jesus' missions is bring to earth uh, his, uh, his life lessons and teachings to help build the kingdom of God in the heart of men and women. And this kingdom is built with the chisel of the goodwill applied into the clay of the emotions. So here we can see that marriage is a great place and perhaps the greatest place, according to Joana de Angelis, that we can do this exercise to work on our emotional, emotional readjustments. And marriage is, is where we see each other, how we really is, uh, how we really are. And we are challenging, challenged every day to make decisions, to communicate, uh, and to learn, to practice uh, all the virtues that are children of charity, understanding, patience, compassion, etc. And then she completes the definition with, and also a shop for, so not a shop for clothes, but it's a shop for moral reparations. Um, so for, to explain that part, let's go to an example. Uh, in the book, uh, Boa Nova, by the spiritual Humberto de Campos, there is a story on chapter 15 about Joanna, wife of Chusa. Not sure how to pronounce it. Uh, apologies about that. So he was um, a steward of Herod Antipas, which was the kind of like the governor of Galilee, a region today's live north of Israel. And so Cusa was a high official, a high employee of the government, like Jewish government. And Joanna was a, a, woman of, a woman of high society. She was a woman of rare dedication and noble character. So she had already developed some of those emotional readjustments purified into elevated sentiments. Um, she had true faith in Jesus. She lived at his time, uh, but she could not break free from anguish in marriage. Her husband was, uh, um, he was not Christian. He kind of had uh, apparently some elements of the Jewish beliefs, but also pagan. Um, in a way, he was uh, related to the Roman Empire in terms of administration. And they had a lot of uh, conflicts regarding that. And she went to look for Jesus. And Jesus talked to her. And the story is really nice. I recommend it to look at the chapter of the book. We just put it here, a small part. He questions this. He's frivolous and indifferent. Love him anyway. So here we have the first part of definition, the emotional readjustments. Uh, many of us in this world of trials and expiations, we we have developed some affection. We can love. We can do things from our heart. But many times, the things that we do are connected to some expectations, some beliefs of rewards, beliefs of acknowledgement, gratitude. So we expect responses. We expect to be appreciated in what we do. We expect to be loved back the way we are practicing love. And Jesus is telling her and telling us here, Love him or her anyways means unconditional love. And this is something that we can practice. We can add to our daily routines. And that will help us to reshape our emotions, to develop patience, understanding that the other person's time is on their hands and God knows when is their time. And the other part to explain the shop for moral reparations. He says, you would not feel attached to him if there were if there was no just reason for it. And that we as spiritists, we can understand how if we are living a world of trials and expiations and we haven't elevated to become spirits of the happy worlds yet, uh, spirits that are regenerated, 
we have failed those trials through many existences. And then eventually we create the need for an expiation, which is an existence that will impose us some limitations that we have to um, pass through this experience with resignation to learn to develop the virtue that was missing. And so that happens in marriage many times, as uh, many spiritist authors say, like Joanna Gianluigi's and Emmanuel and other spiritist authors says that we meet again here those whom we failed in the past. So those who were our victims of our promises that we didn't fulfill, uh, our betrayals, uh, things that we did that we shouldn't have done, they come um, as a husband or a wife and also as kids, and we come with the moral duty to repair the mistakes we have done in the past. So now moving forward about divorce, according to the Spiritist view, um, I don't have much experience about uh, how does it go in the legal part, in the religious part about divorce in a mature perspective, but I understand that in the emotional part, the relationship, um, when a couple is looking for a divorce, it's because there is a fail in, uh, in the expectations. People are not fulfilling, feeling like they're fulfilling the expectations and they're going through suffering. And here, so I brought another image for us to, that can represent uh, a metaphor of a relationship that could go into that direction. Um, sometimes there is one person that's abusing the other person's face and the person is um, allowing himself or herself to be abused. <laughs> so now let's go to the spiritist view. So Kardec um, defines in the gospel according to spiritism, the chapter that Lily read for us, divorce is a man-made law whose objective is to legally separate those who are in fact already separated. So as in this picture, uh, you can see that the, the couple's face, uh, they are not really happy with each other and they perhaps already are emotionally separated. <laughs> And Kardec, on this chapter, this is chapter 22 of the Gospel According to Spiritism, Kardec goes and analyzes uh, Jesus' passage in the Bible. And Jesus himself was responding to a Pharisee, and he brings the teachings from the, uh, from the Genesis book, which today is perhaps attributed to Moses. So Jesus summarizing here, says, so they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. So Jesus is saying that marriage is a divine, is part of the divine law. Um, marriage combines the law of reproduction, so we can um, allow the law of reincarnation. So through marriage, kids can come to the world, reincarnate and renew and learn from the parents. And it's the laboratory of the law of work and law of love. So the law of work being applied to develop the law of love. And Jesus gives this recommendation, which just general recommendation, let us not separate what God has joined together. And then the Pharisee questions back, Jesus, hey, but Moses said that a man could dispose of his woman. And Jesus said, Moses permitted you to divorce your wives because your hearts were hard. So here, Jesus brings it back into the center of the question. Our emotions, our beliefs connected to these emotions, our pride, our selfishness, because of that, then Moses allowed divorce. But it was not this way from the beginning. So Kardec reasons that primitive men would attract it to each other um, by the law of affections, and there was no need for divorce. And then men corrupted himself and women and then divorce became something necessary. So this question is, can be quite confusing for us in the Spirit's book. So is this then absolute indissolubility of marriage a law of nature, or is it man's law? And the answer by the Spirit is it's a human law that contradicts the law of nature. Human laws change while natural law is constant. So it can be confusing because there's a double negation. But basically what he's saying, is asking is, should... Oops. 
my monitor stop working sorry about that can you guys still see my monitor yes okay, so i'm gonna plug that oh screen share has been stopped technical issues so let's try again just a second Can you guys see my screen? I can't see my screen. Not yet. No, can't. Okay, let's try from here. So basically, um, okay, estamos vendo sua set, sua screen. We are seeing your screen now. But you can you see the presentation? Yeah, it's a small. Yeah, it's a small picture okay okay no yeah. it's okay i'm gonna have to minimize this apologies about that so basically this is saying that in this in the dissolubility of marriage is saying that it's asking so is this uh against god's law to allow divorce and the spirits are answering that it's not it is not against god's law and kardex explains that when we married for material reasons, then uh, we should marry by the law of love. And when that doesn't happen, um, then marriage can become a torture and a risk for uh, higher crimes to happen, like uh, people murdering each other or developing a cancer, for example. And so we, as spiritists, we learn that divorce can be a solution according to God's law. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, so I brought here uh, a review from the, the different categories of inhabited worlds in the Gospel According to Spiritism. We had a lecture that talked about this more, if you guys want to read more later. And we can just explain, so why in our planet there are so many divorces? For example, in the United States, I checked the CDC website and it's saying that for 45 states plus Washington, D.C., uh, today's ratio of divorce is about 40%. It's going down. Last time Marisa did the lecture, I remember it was 50%, 2017. Um, so in the primitive world, we learn, Kardec says that uh, the men and women got together uh, by the law of affinity, a law of attraction. So marriage was, uh, in, in the primitive world, marriage was um, based on, on the divine law. And then as men gets corrupted, we eventually we are uh, left to, to try our free will. So we have the trials in the worlds of trials and expiations. And then we start to corrupt ourselves with the experiences and we get married for material reasons, for vanity, for pride. And then we have th thus uh, many couples, they're not happy together and looking for the happiness out of marriage and divorcing. In the world of regenerations, which we are going to, we can also, um, we will also have trials. So this will continue our marriages on earth here, I don't know, 100 years from now, 200 years from now or more. It's still going to have trials. So we're still going to be challenged to develop this laboratory of the emotional readjustments. Um, but it's going to be easier because we're going to have less and less of the expiations. We will, so we should now work on the reparations, the final reparations that we need uh, to continue in the world of regeneration. And we have, we had here in our, uh, uh, we had, we have many spirits from happy worlds or spirits that could be maybe on happy worlds uh, that comes on mission, that come on mission to help us. And so, for example, Alain Kardec and Amélie Boudet, uh, they are an example of a happy marriage uh, marriage that's based on true links of love, affection, affinity. And those are rare in our planets. So if we're, marriage is not like that, we shouldn't feel like we are alone. These are rare. And sometimes we can also have spirits that come incarnate here and get married to a soul of trial expiation to help that soul to elevate. So perhaps they were linked together in the past and then one spirit uh, 
evolved faster, the other one stayed behind, and then that one comes back to uh, as a mission of sacrifice. And if we think about divine uh, spirits who are purified, they do not need this laboratory of uh, emotional readjustments, and they don't have anything to repair anymore. They have repaired everything, and they had purified themselves. So we can see as uh, Jesus is, for example, a, a pure spirit that we know, he's probably married to the whole humankind of earth and the solar system, uh, elevated spirit who has already developed unconditional love and is working daily for our own help. Um, so because of the time and our technical issues, I will have to perhaps skip some slides and try to focus on uh, things that we already mentioned. So causes for separation. Um, Alan Kardec asks in the Spirits book, and the Spirits come to say that um, it is an uh, at atonement. So when we get married, we have all the expectations, like we saw the picture of the couple in the beginning. We might remember for our own memories of being in somebody else's uh, wedding or in our own wedding. But then things change. Um, so first the spirits are telling us that this is a, uh, it's atonement, it's expiation, but it's a short-lived one. So if we go through this expiation properly, uh, we can make it short. Maybe this existence, uh, it can be painful, but then the next ones we have repaired, so we don't need that atonement anymore. And one existence compared to eternity is something really short. Um, and then they convey that we can only cleanse the veil of the illusions of the appearances that we have once we met by actually living together. Because what? Because this is when uh, we are removing our masks and we are seeing each other as we, we really are. And they do recommend then later for us to work on approximating our emotional links by developing respect over time. They, give, they say that many, many cases, even though that happened, these relationships can grow over time by developing respect to each other and developing more familiarity with each other's qualities. So now we start to learn all the other person's qualities, our husbands or wives, and start to develop again, more admiration for that person. So that helps. Uh, finally, they say that the reason this happened is because um, of the two kinds of affection, affection of the body and affection of the soul. So if we are married for uh, only sexual reasons, for the physical attraction, the biological attraction, then when that is over, uh, the link that we're uniting us is also over. So then it's a challenge to continue. And they recommend us to work on our spiritual links because those are lasting compared to the links of the body who are ephemeral. And finally, here are some solutions. Um, we brought some uh, based on the spiritist view. We are already developing the solutions because the spiritist view helps us to understand where you are, gives us guidance for that. And this is already the beginning of the solution because then we can apply changes to ourselves. We talked here about uh, the, the meaning of marriage, which is the laboratory for working of our emotional uh, readjustments and also shop for moral repairs. And it's also uh, connected to the divine law. So then we could practice the exercise in connecting to our conscience, to the sense of our moral duty to apply divine law into our lives. And that can help us to go through the challenging parts of our life and of our marriage. And so here's some of the right tools for us to improve in marriage. Um, and it's not for us to get a, a, the hammer of truth and of this teaching and to nail on our husband or wives. This is for us to apply to ourselves because like Joanna of Cusa, if we can work on our emotional readjustment then we can love more unconditionally like she did. And we can teach by the example, even if the husband or the wife doesn't uh, grasp it on that existence, those seeds of love are planted and they will, for sure, they will grow in the future. Um, so let's bring this rule of marriage that's a laboratory for emotional readjustments and reflect upon that and apply it to our lives. 
and shop for moral reparations. So I brought here also uh, a tool to help us to practice dialogue with compassion and understanding. Um, this tool uh, is presented by uh, Marshall Rosenberg in the book and the seminars about nonviolent communication. I'm not ex a specialist on this yet. I plan to learn more and I recommend all of us to go and to, to learn about that. So let me video now. It's a two minute video, very short. And the, the tool has much more, much more. This is just the beginning. Um, okay, seems like video's not loading. Okay, so I'm not gonna play the video. Okay, it is working. Personal relationships contribute to our happiness, but sometimes things can go wrong. We say and do things that create conflict between us and our loved ones. There is a way to avoid or resolve these conflicts, developed by psychologist Marshall Rosenberg. It's called Nonviolent Communication, or NBC. How does this method work, and how does it help us to be happier in our relationships? NVC is based on the idea that we all have the capacity for compassion and that we only use violence or harmful behavior when we don't have a more effective way to meet our needs. It tries to find a way for everyone to get what really matters without the use of coercive or manipulative language. NVC focuses on three aspects of communication. Self-empathy, the awareness of your own experience, Empathy, the understanding of the other with your heart, and honest self-expression, expression that inspires compassion in others. Practitioners of NVC focus in their communication on four aspects. Observation, what are you seeing, hearing, or touching without evaluating or judging? Feelings, what are your emotions without thoughts or stories added to them? needs. What do you desire without thinking of the strategy to get there? Requests. What specific action would you like to ask without demanding it? The components of NVC work together. A typical NVC way of expressing something would be, when you do A, I feel B, because I want C. I would really appreciate it if you would be willing to do D. NVC is useful for connecting with others and living in a way that is conscious, present, and in tune. And that, in the end, makes all of us happier. Okay, um, just a small uh, recommendation here. When we are talking about emotions, sometimes we go and we say, I feel judged, I feel rejected, I feel abandoned. So those are not feelings, those are judgments. So it's really cool how he explains, uh, perhaps I feel insecure, I feel vulnerable, I feel mad, I feel angry. Those are feelings. Um, I recommend uh, any of us who wants to improve in their communication with those who are close to us, actually husband and wives or future husband and wives, to spend more of your time investing in yourself and your happiness to learn uh, these tools and other tools. Um, so finally, I um, apologize, I think I started to go a little bit over the time uh, because of the technical issues. Uh, and we finally got to the conclusion, so I think we only have, I'm only going to go past maybe one or two minutes. Re reviewing that marriage is the laboratory for emotional readjustments. Um, let me put the microphone on. So. Um, divorce is... Um, is a legal separation of what is already separation according to the spiritist view. And there are cases that divorce may be necessary, recommended, and cases where it can be avoided if we are really doing what we should be doing spiritually regarding a marriage. So finally, I want to leave the uh, last words by uh, Joanna Giangeli. Um, it is essential that before any final decision for a separation divorce, all efforts for reconciliation be made. So that is crucial so you can be later at peace with your own conscience. Um, you know you tried everything you could and 
you have done your part. Um, there is no doubt that those who, if we separate now, and maybe it was for a fair reason, um, if, if we haven't solved those links from the past, we still will have different opportunities in the future lives perhaps to solve, and it may be a little bit more painful. So if that happens, let us now uh, continue working on our emotions, on our uh, inner in improvement, so we can be more prepared for the trial when it happens again. And she says that this is also more in consideration of the children who are entitled to a respectable parental union. So the parents, when they are together and make effort to stay together, this reflects a lot in the children's happiness. Um, and so this is also loving your children by making all the efforts for reconciliation. So thank you guys. I'm going to now um, do our final prayer.